how's how's it going what's up so this video i'm going to be talking about skateboarding and youtube what has been the most cursed marriage of <laughs> hobby and and social media this video that george pulos did recently where he's reacting to the nine club so it's gonna be dope i'm gonna be reacting to a reaction i'm uniquely positioned kind of to talk about this because you know historically it's definitely true that the core skate community has turned its nose up at youtube and i think that some of the guys that do youtube are confused as to why that is the case um, and i'm going to be sharing my perspective as somebody who also does youtube for a living but has some level of uh, acceptance from the core skateboarding community. And I hate the word core, but that's, you know, that's what it's called, obviously. So, so that's what we're going to call it. Anyway, his YouTube is just his name. George. Yes, George Pol- I'm going to blow his last name. Poilus. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Crazy, dude. George P is getting- scooter ads i've never even received an email okay 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 jesus christ man all right here we go here we go so george is over there chris is over there and so i'm going over here and mikey's in the middle Chris Chan, the Tesla. Yep. And Chris Chan's <laughs> another one too. We've asked him, I've asked Chris to be on the show many times. He's a little, you know, standoffish, you know, because there's the comment section, you yeah. know, and so there's a, you know, he lives these kind of two yeah. worlds side by side, the skateboarding world and the mm -hmm. YouTube world. And I think that's a shame. Yeah. You know, there shouldn't be that line. Yeah. He does what he does. He's a skateboarder, phenomenal skateboarder. Yeah. I would love to have him on the show. I think it's super interesting that Chris Chan doesn't want to go on the Nine Club because if I were invited on the Nine Club, I would go immediately. If you want to go on the Nine Club using them uh, in some cringy clickbait title, like they roasted me on the Nine Club, which they definitely did not do, um, that's probably not going to make Chris want to invite you on the show. I'm completely unafraid of hate comments from core skateboarders. I simply do not give a single f I would love the experience to meet those guys. So I really appreciate that he says directly, like, I don't think there should be this line between social media skaters and core skaters. It seems like from Chris's perspective and, and George's perspective, it's kind of a mystery. And George goes on to say that it's arbitrary. Um, that this line exists like people don't seem to like fully understand why the line exists and I'm a person obviously I don't believe that there should be a line between social media skating like doing YouTube and core skating I think that you know you can represent the core community of skateboarding and you can appeal to those people on YouTube the platform is irrelevant to understand why this divide exists from my perspective we can go back in time take a look at some of the youtube founding fathers aaron cairo andy schrock a little bit later on i think john hill they really inspired this generation of of skate youtubers like george pulos if you look at the style of those videos they're pretty much like vlogs they're like skateboard vlogs where you know, the content isn't necessarily about skateboarding. It's more about the person who's uploading that stuff on their YouTube channel. When you make a skateboard vlog, a vlog is not counterculture. Vlogging is on some turbo incredible normie shit. Like, I'm sorry, that's that's just how I see it. If you're really holding up a, a camera to your face in public and being like, what the fuck is going on, YouTube? What is good today? I'm at the drive through at Starbucks. It's like... That type of energy where you put on this completely fake personality that a lot of these YouTubers do, that's like a learned attitude. That's a learned way of being that they see as successful on YouTube. The trouble with that now is that people have kind of evolved, I think, from what I can tell. The trend of vlogging is, is dying off. That's prevalent, in my opinion, on YouTube in general, but it's especially prevalent prevalent on skateboard YouTube. You look at a channel like John Hill, okay, and let's go back three years ago, and John Hill, like, you know, he's getting 743,000, 100,000, 271,000, 1.3 million views, 883,000, 366. I mean, there's still some, like, lower ones in between, like, 59 and 42, but 
generally speaking, he's getting some really high performing videos. So John Hill at this point in his career is definitely making a killing. Um, if you look at his stuff now, it's not looking anywhere near as promising. 17K, 35K, 11K, 19K, 25K, 49K, 20K, 15K. So what went from John Hill's worst videos being 50K three or four years ago, now those are his best performing videos. Clearly there has been a shift in taste and this isn't only applying to John Hill. You can look at somebody like Garrett Jenner's uh, YouTube videos as well. 500,000 views, 131,000 views, 300,000 views, 153K views, 101,000 views, 367,000 views. Look at his channel now, 31K, 52K, 20K, 18K, 43K, 20, 20K, 14K. It's basically the, the same exact story. Used to get tons of views, used to rake in money, and now it's like the it, the situation is not looking as good. I think that it's just a cultural thing that people don't really care about vlogs that much anymore. I think that YouTube has advanced and it has progressed past this vlogging style. I don't think that they have adjusted their game plan and sort of looked around and seen what people are, are wanting to watch. This is just conjecture, but I would guess that a lot of people that used to watch this kind of shit were either kids or people that didn't actually really skate that much. When somebody is vlogging or something um, and they're doing some turbo normie shit, skateboarders aren't going to be into that because part of what gets people into skateboarding is counterculture. And there's a whole argument that people make, which is that like, oh, you know, well, if you're doing normie shit in skateboarding because skateboarding is counterculture, then that's counterculture. I think that's a little bit silly, to be honest. I, I think that there's like too many layers to that. In my opinion, if you give a noob a skateboard, they're still a noob. Um, and I don't like, I don't mean to disparage any of these dudes, honestly. Like I'm genuinely today, I'm not here to kick anybody in the balls, but I, I am not surprised that people kind of got disenchanted with this style of content because it is just like, totally phony YouTuber bullshit. And it's no wonder like, you know, why George Poulos, he's got 318,000 subscribers and, and this video came out on the 31st of last month. This is nearly a week old now. It hasn't even cracked 9,000 views yet. Obviously he's not adapting his content and he's clickbaiting his audience. So if you wanna click, you wanna clickbait your audience, that's fine, but you should know that that's a short-term strategy. If you wanna have a sustainable career in YouTube, and take this with a grain of salt because I'm brand new to YouTube, I've only been doing this for a year, but my goal has never been to trick anybody into clicking on my video because if I were to ever get to a point where I had 318,000 subscribers, I wouldn't want all of those people at some point down the line to be like, oh, here's Joa just titling whatever the video whatever the fuck he wants again with no concern for whether or not that is actually reflected in the content. In my opinion, this topic is interesting enough to the point where you don't need to clickbait it. I think that this is an interesting discussion to have, and I think that it's kind of unfortunate that people feel like they need to resort to lying to their audience about the contents of their video. You know, I'm growing up and maturing and realizing that everybody lives their life differently. Why Why do skaters give so much of a shit how other skaters want to skate and live and film and post their skating? Like, it can all coexist very happily and joyously and peacefully, but I digress. So this little tidbit about how skaters are sort of like this judgmental group of people and how it doesn't really like make any sense, I've never agreed with that philosophy. I've always been on board with skateboarders being kind of judgmental assholes because there's like a gatekeeping mentality I think a lot of people you know they think that's a bad thing and, and skateboarding can be an intimidating thing to get into but what I think happens is when you have a culture like that it produces kind of a hardened community if you're a noob and you go to the skate park or something and like you know people I nobody has to be nice to you nobody has to teach you how to drop in on a ramp like sure that's great if somebody does that there's kids that have the expectation that they're going to have their hand held through skateboarding and they're going to be able to talk to all the cool people and like it's just going to be easy fucking peasy and i think that's what george pulos wants in my opinion i don't think that that's like the best case scenario for skateboarding i think skateboarding is cool because it requires you to kind of earn your stripes and the people who end up 
down the line still skating are the people who really like it. So what you end up with is a group of people that are really passionate about what they do. One of the kids that came uh, came with a friend and he's a YouTube skater. Okay. Right? Do we know this guy's name? Or are we gonna shout him out or no? You know what? I should pull up, his name's George. Mikey is now pulling up my YouTube channel. Oh. His YouTube is just his name. George. Yes, George Pol I'm gonna blow his last name, Poil Poilus. Bruh. I think Mikey would totally be the type of guy to purposefully mispronounce somebody's name to like try to flex on them. Okay. P-O-U-L-O-S. He's got 300,000 subscribers. Okay. Hey, if you wanna help me make it 400K, you know what to do. This is exactly what I'm talking about with like YouTubers, you skateboard YouTubers copying the same exact format that YouTubers in the past have done. It's so <laughs> annoying to just be in the middle of the YouTube video to be like, yo, if you do want to make a 400,000 subscribers, you know what to do. Hit the fucking red button in the description. Woo! And then every time an image pops up on screen, it goes bing, bong, bing. It turns into like a fucking sensory experience. Um, and you know, you have to add fucking lo-fi music in the background. Like all of these like little editing strategies, I find them extremely annoying. I look at what YouTube is by and large and I think, you know, I like YouTube, but I wanna do it in my own way. I wanna cut out all the shit that I don't like about YouTube because in my opinion, you don't have to remind people to subscribe and like the video in the beginning, in the middle, and the end of every every single time you fucking upload something. I think that not being annoying about you know what you do is it goes a long way. Is that like separation real? Mm -hmm. You know, we had such a good conversation about it, and to my perspective, it is real. Yeah. It, it's it's totally real. I think that you know a lot of core core skateboarders don't like skateboard YouTubers because skateboard YouTubers are kind of nerds. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's just how I see it. Call me a nerd if you want to, call me a hypocrite, because I have glasses and I sit in my room and I also make YouTube videos. I'll accept that. When it comes to a hobby like skateboarding, I think people want, you know, their viewpoints and, you know, the way that they see things and their culture represented by the person on screen. And I don't think that somebody with like a, a phony vlog personality, that doesn't reflect the ideals uh, of skateboarders at all. I'm generalizing the term core skateboarders, but of course I know that there's like good hearted people who participate in skateboarding in, in the more traditional way. If you don't like YouTube skateboarders because like fucking vlogger personalities don't appeal to you, that means that you're you're not a good hearted person. I think that George perceives like the judgment and the gatekeeping mentality of skateboarding as a strictly negative thing that doesn't actually serve any kind of purpose. The reason that George is in a position to make any money is because skateboarding has is as popular as it is today because it has been run on the back of core skateboarding. Street skateboarding is what has made skateboarding sustainable. And the attitudes about, you know, gatekeeping and pushing people out of the space that, that people don't feel like represent skateboarding in a way that is healthy for skateboarding, then like, yeah, I mean, skateboarders aren't going to aren't gonna co-sign that. There's a reason that, that people think that way. It's not arbitrary. One, yes, I believe the chorus of core skateboarders are not watching YouTubers, unless it's packaged in a particular format like Thrasher, like the Nine Club. I don't really know what core skaters be watching. I have no idea. You know, I'm speaking for myself. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of skate YouTubers who take serious inspiration from the core side of skateboarding. Me, honestly, I don't. I don't watch what core skaters are doing anymore. I just lost interest in it. So it's it's funny to me that George Poulos is the type of guy that will say, you know, I don't really pay attention to what core skaters are doing. I don't read any of the negative comments and then is mystified as to why the core skateboard community doesn't like him or doesn't like YouTubers in general. There seems to be like this, this confusion about it. It's like, maybe if you read the comments and you were open to criticism, you would understand it a bit better. I think that, you know, somebody like George Poulos is a professional who makes videos about skateboarding yet doesn't understand the skateboard community in the slightest. And yeah, you're on this like sort of niche part of YouTube skating where you don't have to appeal to those people necessarily to do what you do. But I think that to act confused and to claim that the core skateboarding's opinions are totally arbitrary because you don't pay attention to core skateboarding and you don't listen to negative comments reflects more about 
you than it does the core skateboarding community. Um, so instead of looking inward and trying to figure out what am I doing wrong and why don't these people like me, you just claim that those people's opinions are arbitrary. I probably would have looked at that as whack too. Like sure. yeah. when I was a kid, it was like, dude, this is how it's done. And this is like, you know, where kind of all the respect we lies also in a grew sense, up right? In a whole yeah, the nineties were different. The nineties yeah, were different. So yeah, um, totally understand that. We're in a we're in a different place now. Obviously social media wasn't even a thing in the nineties. I just found so much confidence in pursuing my happiness that I largely don't even feel the negativity in, anymore. So <laughs> You should have you should have done that takeover, George. It was really obvious that it physically hurt you to to say that sentence. As a YouTuber, I think that criticism kind of crucial to what we both do, what George and I do. George and I have the same job, which is uh, YouTubers. It's one thing I think if your channel's popping um, and you're killing the game and you're like, I don't give a fuck about no negative comments, bitch, look at my bank account. Like I'm fucking murdering it. George isn't in that position clearly with, with, with his YouTube channel. I mean, we, we've seen his views. So to like continue having this attitude, like, you know, I'm just relentlessly pursuing my own happiness, like as incredibly cringe as that sentence is. It's also like kind of sad to hear that. Cause it's like, dude, you know, if you were more open-minded, perhaps, you know, you would be able to see that there might be something valuable to learn from what dissenting opinions are saying. And this is like the top, the toxic positivity of skateboarding YouTubers. Everything is good and everything is dope. And anybody who says anything negative, like their opinion doesn't really matter because it's not a positive one. So these, I think these YouTubers have like deluded themselves into believing that they couldn't possibly be the problem. There is no problem with, with being a toxically positive person. Like that doesn't even exist. The only problem is the people who say negative shit. You wear whatever you want. You wear a helmet if you want. You wear whatever brand clothing and shoes that you want. The Karyuma negativity is a whole nother story. Another example of kind of skateboarding culture as a whole arbitrarily deciding to hate something and then judging people for participating in it. It's all wild and immature. So you can tell that uh, Karyuma is really like a placeholder for his emotions about how the core skate community thinks about him. So he's saying that it's, you know, it's totally arbitrary that skaters don't like Karyuma. Um, the funny thing about this is that George actually tagged me in a TikTok about this in the comments. And then I responded to it because that's how TikTok works. You can respond to a comment. And I explained it. And I did part one. And then I was going to try to do part two, but George deleted the comment. And this is like totally unrelated to what I'm doing right now. This was just a coincidence. But it says so much to me that George doesn't understand why skaters don't like Karyuma and sort of <laughs> it's like a perfect metaphor, honestly, and says, you know, I don't pay attention to the core skateboard community. It doesn't interest me. I don't read negative comments and then claims that the core skateboarding community's opinions are completely arbitrary. That's the mindset of a person like this. There's so many different e examples of why skaters don't like Karyuma. I'll just give a few. You look at how Karyuma started off in in the skateboarding industry okay what was one of the first things that they did sponsor youtube skaters to do shoe reviews which is something that george participated in himself and that's obviously totally unethical you cannot pay somebody to do a product review that's a conflict of interest then that product review is just an advertisement and the fact that they even felt like they needed to disguise it as a product review i think is wrong so right off the bat they're untrustworthy okay then you look at who karyuma sponsors we look at their website here okay instagram skater contest skater instagram skater he is now anyway um contest skater i actually like kelvin instagram skater i think instagram skater contest skater instagram skater Sorry, Justin. Um, uh, Instagram skater, Instagram skater, slash contest skater, uh, Instagram skater, I think. YouTuber. Okay, so why does Karyuma elect to sponsor these people? You know, what you get when you sponsor Instagram skaters and contest skaters is you get maximum visibility in skateboarding um, without actually contributing at all to the part of skateboarding that really keeps the wheels turning, which is core skateboarding. Um, and if you disagree with that, then 
let me make my case for you. Contest skaters, what's the biggest contest in skateboarding? It's street league. What is street league mimicking? Street skateboarding. What contest skating aims to do, and there's this is fine. I'm not saying that this part of skateboarding shouldn't exist. I enjoy contest skating. But what contest skating aims to do is take street skateboarding and package it in a way that is as marketable and as highly entertaining as possible. But for that to happen and for skateboarding to even be in that position in the first place, all the work that is put in has been put in by the core skateboard community. It's called core for a reason because that is the heart and soul of skateboarding. That is what has made skateboarding sustainable up until this point. That is why somebody like Sean Davis is in a position to do Instagram uh, for, for money and be an Instagram skater. When your strategy is to sponsor all contest and Instagram skaters, then it's clear to me what you're trying to do. Profit off of the vignette and the outside of skateboarding without interacting or injecting any money into the part that keeps skateboarding alive. You know, their marketing is sustainable. The shoes themselves are supposed to be sustainable. But when it comes to the actual skateboarding community, the group of people that they're trying to profit off of, they don't care about actually injecting any money into the places that keep skateboarding sustainable. And obviously there's Mike Vallely who is just like, um, the old head that they got on here who's like co-signing what the company is doing. So everything Karayuma does is sort of on the outside and on the vignette of, of skateboarding. And they also didn't put their shoes in shops. And you might say, well, shops probably don't want their shoes. Yeah, now they don't. Why the fuck would they want them now? They've already made their entrance into skateboarding in such a tasteless manner. It's like such a corporate approach to be like, we want Instagram skaters, we want contest skaters. That's who we're gonna pay to represent us. It's like, obviously they are appealing and they are only trying to profit off of skateboarding from people who don't know anything about skateboarding and don't know anything about the skateboarding community. And so when you say that it's arbitrary that the skateboarding community doesn't like something because they don't care about you know skateboarding being sustainable and sponsoring skateboarders that actually make a difference in the skate scene, like that's totally fucking stupid. Um, and if you're one of those people that's like, oh, who cares? Like skate shops are just a middleman or something. Like fine, have that opinion, but also understand that like skate shops are important to local communities. Like if nothing else, skate shops give people jobs. It gives skateboarders jobs. So I've heard, you know, somebody like George Poulos just be like, what's, what's wrong with, you know, spending a bunch of money on marketing and, and paying skaters? It's not the fact that they spend money on marketing and skaters. It's how they do it. The whole thing is just like, it feels completely fabricated. Like the way that they go about advertising themselves. You look at something like Trans World Skate, which Trans World used to be a magazine. It's it's not anymore. Um, Trans World Skate, it's like, they're, they're an aggregator page where they just, you know, they post shit um, from around Instagram. And what Tra what Karayuma has evidently done is either, you know, bought out Trans World or has a deal with Trans World of some kind, where pretty much every fifth post now is a guy in Karayuma shoes. Like, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Like, it's, it's all over the place. So, like, this is perfectly explains what Karayuma does, is they, like, falsely inject themselves into a, a skateboard aggregator page like Instagram to try to make it look like they're just normal and present in skateboarding when it, nothing could be further from the truth. It's completely obvious that Karayuma is just pays for all of its fucking exposure without taking any of the, the right steps to make themselves appreciated in the skate community because they don't give back to any part of skateboarding that people feel like is important, like myself. You pull up, you freely express, you you interact with the skate park as you want to, whatever, like it should all just be purely accepted and there should be no negativity between two people, no matter how differently they like to enjoy skateboarding. So this is this speaking of Karayuma and like this attitude that George has, which is like, yeah, man, we should just go to the park. Like everybody should just fucking vibe. And there would never, ever be a reason that you might not like what somebody is doing at the skate park, which I don't, have you ever been to a skate park? I imagine you've been to a skate park, George. One of the skaters that skates for Karayuma, that guy Trap Dion, I have this footage of him at the skate park acting like a fucking maniac doing the ugliest spread eagle tray flip fatty to flatties 
and then in between attempts doing push-ups and backflips, basically turning himself into this spectacle to say that like you know there would never be a reason like that this to to be upset at anybody when this guy is obviously just fucking completely terrorizing the vibes at, at this skate park it's like it's a totally unrealistic opinion to me like all this toxic positivity shit is like not based in reality as far as i'm concerned when i grew up like dude you hated everything and it was just that was gnarly. Dude, you hated everything, and it was gnarly. Like, is fucking Mikey Taylor even a, 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 a human being anymore? <laughs> His brain has been corrupted by financial TikTok. I love the idea of somebody finding an alternate route I in. love it too. I love that. Like, <laughs> oh, I didn't go through the front door, I went through the side. I love that. You don't need to go through any traditional path. You can take the side door, like Mikey said, which could be YouTube, could be social media, whatever. And that there's no reason to, to hate on or judge people for choosing that way. YouTube is not the problem. It's the people that upload on YouTube that are the problem. It's the new, like Jamie Thomas, so the new Andrew Reynolds. Right. Instead of them starting the business, they just go into basically YouTube becoming the business. Yeah. I could not agree. That is cr the craziest a comparison I've, I've ever heard, by the way, saying that YouTubers are the new Andrew Reynolds and Jamie Thomas. To me, those guys are totally different than what YouTubers doing because they started massive skateboard companies that have been, you know, foundational and fundamental to skateboarding sustainability over the past couple of decades. Those have been hugely important for growth in skateboarding and sustainability in skateboarding. Those are skateboard companies that have supported skateboarding in crucial ways. Um, and to say that YouTubers are like the new generation of that, it's like, okay, you know, not yet. Maybe one day, nobody currently is doing anything like those guys have done or has had impact like those guys have had. And maybe you can make a case that Luis Mora with Erase Project, you know, pays some skaters to to wear his, his brand. But that's nothing like... That's nothing like what Andrew Reynolds or, or Jamie Thomas has done. I'm not saying that's never going to happen because I think the future of skateboarding is going to have a lot to do with, with social media. And there will be people who figure out how to do it in a way that appeals to core skaters. But to say that the current class of YouTubers is like the new Jamie Thomas, I think is, is, is psycho. Unless you're going to make the case that like Braille and uh, Revive or like those are legit and dope skate companies, then... I have to say that, you know, I think I'm biased in my assessment of something like Braille and Revive because I think the marketing and the way that, you know, they do their videos like Gummy Bear Grip Tape Challenge, it's all like incredibly corny and like kind of an ugly thing to attach to skateboarding. I can understand that like, yeah, it's effective financially, but it doesn't mean that like I have to applaud that kind of shit, you know? So even though it's true that that stuff does well, uh, it, it kind of, you know, it's, it still physically repulses me. I'm not relying on a core skate industry brand to pay me to promote my skateboarding. I just want to say that I would <laughs> not pretend as though that would have been an option for George to be paid by a, a, a core skate company. That's cool that somebody like George figured out a niche in skateboarding and how to get a foothold and to do something that he, that he likes it and to make money off of that, but then to sort of like act like there was any other you know, choice in the matter. Like I've seen George's video part. I've, I've seen his footage with all due respect. Uh, wouldn't, the core skateboarding path was never an option. Also, I don't know why any core skateboard companies would want to sponsor your videos because core skaters don't watch them. So that doesn't make any sense, uh, like why you're bragging that you don't have to take money from people that wouldn't want to give you money. You're better off doing electronic scooter ads. The new Andrew Reynolds, right. instead of them starting the business, they just go into basically YouTube becoming the business. And it says a lot to me about, you know, how Mikey Taylor's uh, attitude about skateboarding has shifted and his mindset has shifted in general. He basically like removes all of the context of, you know, Baker and Zero and what they represent in skateboarding and then just sees that YouTubers are making money and is like, well, you know, Andrew Reynolds and Jamie Thomas made money off of skateboarding and now these YouTubers are making money off of skateboarding. So those guys are the new Jamie Thomas and Andrew Reynolds, which I think is, you know, psychotic. The only thing that it seems like Mikey Taylor cares about now is money. I think a lot of people have the concept that like core skating, you can't make any money. That's a bad mindset. And that's not at all something that I 
am trying to enforce. You don't have to be a corny YouTuber to be a YouTuber. That's basically my main thesis. You build your community, then they well, guess what the community starts asking you for? Clothes, yeah, shirts, products. shirts, products. And you know now you're I mean? Danny like, Duncan, just that's new why, business, new oh, business, new business. That, Do you see how horny Mikey Taylor is for like business, business, money? He's like Mr. Krabs, money, money, money. Anything about like generating revenue is like, just gets Mikey Taylor incredibly, incredibly horny. And it's like, you know, People think that skaters don't like Mikey Taylor anymore because Mikey Taylor's making money, I think, or is like some finance bro. And it's like, people don't like finance bros because they're disingenuous people. They put on fake personalities to try to sell you on what they're doing. That's why skaters don't like Mikey Taylor anymore because he comes across as a massive phony. It's not that complicated. Skaters don't like phony people. There's nothing wrong with like being into real estate and being into making money, but it's just like, you can hear it in the way that Mikey Taylor talks now. Like we used to hate on everything and it was gnarly. It's like, dude, you're, you don't sound like a real person anymore. You sound like a cartoon character trying to sell me a fucking condo. I think every skateboarder yeah. needs their own YouTube. Yeah. There, there's a whole world that lives on YouTube. Totally. Agree. But everybody thinks of YouTube, they think of, oh, now I'm going to be, you know, considered a YouTuber. I have to vlog. I have to do this and I have to do that. It's like, no, you don't. You can do whatever you want to do. You just, if you put your old skate clips on there, That's put right. your old whatever, That's do right. a fucking tutorial. Yeah. Part of the problem with this, I think, is that obviously a lot of people just don't want to do YouTube because YouTube is like, it's a great job. I really enjoy what I do, but at the same time, you know, it comes with its own set of problems. Not that I'm trying to sit here and try to explain to you that YouTube is a difficult job or anything because compared to most jobs, it's not. I would say that if I had a choice to, if I made the same amount of money doing what I do right now versus just riding my skateboard, <laughs> I would just ride my skateboard. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, hell yeah, that would, I would, I would rather do that. Running a YouTube channel is, it, it takes a certain type of individual to do it. And that's not necessarily the same type of individual that wants to skateboard for a living. People watch uh, Mark Gonzalez's videos because Mark Gonzalez is cool. His videos are cool because he's just himself on camera and he just puts shit out there that he wants to put out. People already know who he is. And he doesn't change his personality just because he's on YouTube. You don't need to become a different person on YouTube. Every time an image pops up on screen, you don't need to fucking insert a dinging or a popping sound effect just because that's what other YouTubers do. I don't know if Mark actually makes any money off of YouTube, if he even puts ads on his videos, but I'm using him as an example just to say that there's a guy, a skater who does YouTube, who just makes YouTube videos for fun and people like them and he could put ads on them if he wanted to. I could understand, you know, maybe you love skateboarding, but you just don't wanna, you don't feel like making videos. It's not one of your passions. That makes a lot more sense, but if you're holding it back because of that core versus YouTuber thing and you wanna be accepted here, that's mad wild that you would let fear of judgment control your decisions. I agree with this point that George makes actually, which is I think that if you wanna make YouTube videos about skateboarding, you most definitely should, and you should give it your, your best go, because I think that there's space on YouTube for more skateboarding content. I just think that people should be aware that the same exact formula that has been done for decades at this point, which is basically, hey, I was a fan of the Casey Neistat videos, and I have a skateboard. Like, if that's what you're gonna fucking do for your YouTube channel, I wouldn't expect it to be successful. If I'm doing what everybody else is doing and what everybody else is doing isn't getting that many views, why would what I'm doing be different? You know, I think that's an important question to ask yourself. That being said, do try. Try if you want to do YouTube, like genuinely, Give it, give it your best go. You gotta want to do that. You dude. have to want to do that. And if yeah. you don't want to do that, then yeah, that's true. I'm almost like fearful for the nine club. Like, are the is the core skate community gonna start to hate these guys for being so pro YouTuber? This is like crazy that George Poulos actually said this. Like, is the nine club gonna get canceled? Like, this is. <laughs> This is a, like something that I hear a lot from from skate YouTubers is they use the word like the skate community wants to cancel me or they want to cancel the barracks or something. It's like, dude, nobody wants to fucking cancel the nine club. 
Like, just because you're you're critical of something, it doesn't mean that you want it to go bye-bye. Totally stupid to say, are they gonna get canceled? And I, I think George has this idea that, like, the Nine Club is, like, this pinnacle of core skateboarding content, which, you know, the Nine Club is cool for for some reasons, and it's uncool for other reasons. Because the Nine Club is sort of, they go where the check leads them, um, you know, they have to make sacrifices about what they are willing to say and what like what they won't say. So basically it's like the nine club, as far as I'm concerned, is like a room full of dudes agreeing with each other. And that's fine. Like they get access to a lot of cool interviews and, and they have interesting videos uh, with those people. But I don't think the nine, the nine club certainly isn't like the, the pinnacle of core skateboarding content. It's kind of core. I would say that the nine club is soft core. And I think that, you know, George Poulos is, idea about you know what the nine club is being this like this super hardcore like skate podcast like dude come on like uh, obviously not yo on that note while i was editing this i realized that they have a car yuma product placement car yuma seems to be the cardinal sin amongst the core skateboarding if you are spotted supporting car yuma you're canceled i'm sure the nine club <laughs> you're canceled paid for this product nobody's fucking canceling car yuma dudes like we all just think that it's fucking lame like what does the word canceled even mean like Nobody's getting canceled for wearing Karyumas. Like skateboarders just think that it's corny and they say that it's corny. Like that's the distinction is these people with these like toxic positivity mindsets think that if you say anything negative about something, then you want it canceled and you want it to disappear forever. Like I don't think Karyuma is like really that great for skateboarding, but I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to fucking cancel anybody over it. I'm not trying to cancel George Poulos for having what I think is an extremely ignorant opinion about the situation. Doesn't mean that I'm trying to fucking cancel him. I'm just stating my opinion. Having a dissenting opinion doesn't mean canceling something. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's already a slap magazine forum hating on them for it. Oh my God, dude. What the fuck was that boomer ass sentence? And I wouldn't be surprised if there was already a slap magazine forum hating on them for it. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's already a slap <laughs> magazine forum hating on them for it. Kate, there's different audiences to cater to also. Yeah. Andy Schrock, their channel is teaching kids how to skate. Yeah. They're bringing in skaters yeah. into the skateboarding community. Yeah. Yeah. which then discover core, quote-unquote, core skateboarding, and that may go from revive yeah. to a zero. Exactly. Okay, so this is like, this is the, the part of the argument that I will be like, okay, fine, you know what? There is an argument to be made for like revive and stuff and how it's like George Pulo says, it's onboarding and that's like, that's good for the skate community because it gets people into skating. That's fine, like, okay, whatever. You know, personally, I wouldn't let my kid watch Aaron Cairo though. Dude's fucking super weird. Good question. Oh my gosh, this one gets me so heated. Cause see, here's the deal. You're a beginner skateboarder. You're not a poser. Everybody <laughs> starts somewhere. Even the absolute best of the best of the best <laughs> skateboarders started out. They had no idea how to ollie, no idea how to kickflip. We do not need to start calling people posers. We do not. Nobody needs to be called a poser. That doesn't help you learn. We're changing that. There are no posers. There are only beginners. That's the difference. Let's go. Yo, nobody needs to be a poser. Nobody needs to not learn skateboarding. All you need to do is subscribe to the Braille Army Plus app. The thing with this question and why I don't fucking like this guy and why if I had a kid, I wouldn't let them watch Aaron Cairo. I wouldn't even let my dog watch Aaron Cairo. This is a good question. And if somebody asked me this question, I would answer it. The difference between beginners and posers is beginners are just people that are trying to learn how to skateboard. Posers are, pe are people that are pretending to be something that they're not. Skill level is utterly irrelevant to this question. That's why it makes this a good question. And of course, Aaron Cairo doesn't like even address what is actually interesting about this question at all. He just is like, yo, no calling people posers, man. Everybody is dope. Everybody is awesome. Like in my opinion, there's some professional skateboarders uh, that are posers. And this guy, that's why I stopped skating, to be honest. No one gave me patience or just showed me anything. Just talked down on me. Good. I'm glad that you didn't have the, the balls to keep skating, ex-BMO. <laughs>
If you wanted to keep skating, you would have. This is why I created the Braille app at Braille Army Plus to make a supportive community for people learning all over the world. It sucks that it causes people to quit because the more people that quit, the less money goes to the Church of Scientology. Oh uh, yeah, baby. Money, money, uh, money. Are you happy skateboarding? If those are your criteria for making it in skateboarding, then damn right having a successful YouTube channel is making it in skateboarding. But again, if you're if you're relying on the respect and acceptance from this one side of skateboarding and the opinions they form, you know, you're going to have a little bit more trouble because you're going to need to cater to arbitrary opinions. You're going to need to cater to arbitrary opinions, i.e. people that don't like me for valid reasons. Uh, basically, to summarize, I think um, the future of YouTube and YouTube skateboarding and YouTube social media, it doesn't have to be cringe. If you want to start a fucking YouTube channel, Go for it. Try it out. But don't have the expectation that anybody owes you anything by watching your videos. And that, like, especially if you're doing the same exact shit that's already been done for, for a, over a decade now, um, don't expect that anybody's going to want to click on your videos. Like, best of luck to everybody. Um, but yeah, YouTube is not the problem. The people that upload on YouTube are the problem. Um, and I think the only reason that something like Braille and Revive are still doing well or still getting views from what I can see is that they're literally on some like, give your kid the iPad at Olive Garden and open a Braille video type of shit. I don't even know if people that watch Braille are even sentient yet. Meanwhile, like people like John Hill and, and George Poulos are kind of like, they're trying to make videos for an audience that doesn't really exist anymore. Like. If you want to make YouTube vlogs, do it for the Coco Melon audience. All right. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I love you. I'm sad.